It's okay, Orioles fans. The cheap goblin is gone. I just... Taking this news in. So, a couple months back, I think it was actually around December, um, there was rumors swirling around that uh, Dave Rubenstein could be buying the Baltimore Orioles from the Angelos family. But a lot of people were kind of hesitant to believe it because would Peter, Peter Angelos sell the team? I mean, he's been owner of the team since 1993, and his son, John Angelos, has since taken over the the business role now that Peter is, well, retired at this point for the most part. And um, here we are, second to last day of January of 2024, about two weeks before pitchers and catchers report to spring training, and it's happened, officially. David Rubenstein, and I can't remember his partner's name for the life of me, and I'm sorry, have bought the Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore natives have bought the Baltimore Orioles. The Angelos family is from Nashville, and that was always why people were like, oh, the, the Orioles could move to Nashville. These guys, they want the Orioles to be in Baltimore, and they want them to stay there. Now we have the 30-year lease at Camden Yards, so that was pretty much already, we, we knew we were going to be in Baltimore with the Angelos family, uh, at least for this season, who would have known what they would have done if if they would have still been here for majority of the lease? But um, yeah, I think I saw we sold for one point seven billion dollars. This guy has a net worth of like four million dollars, and from what I heard from the other companies that he is the owner of, he um he likes to spend money, and that is something that I I love to hear. You know, I know we're not going to have Yankees money or Dodgers money but probably something more like Texas Rangers money, where we'll be able to handle, or not handle, hand out, a, you know, a big contract or two for a good bit of, you know, a couple of years, and then build around those big contracts. But if I was him, the first three things I would get done, you extend Adley, Gunner, and Jackson Holiday, and then you start building around them while you still have them in their prime. So, We'll see what this guy can do. Hopefully he lives up to the expectation, and hopefully he spends money like people said, because I'm getting really tired of these flat off seasons and these one-year deals. Granted, the one-year deal for Kimbrough made sense, but, like, you know, I just... That Nelson Cruz one-year deal, and then being hesitant to give him a four-year deal after leading the major leagues and homers, despite, you know, everybody saying, oh, he's he's going to take a step down because the steroids were, were, were what keeping him going... It just, it, it amazed me so much how the Angelos family cheaped out, other than signing Chris Davis, and we all saw how that turned out, and I feel like they were pressured to sign Chris Davis, because at the time he was, you know, the Major League home run leader in two of the three years prior to his new contract, so, if, you know, at the time, if you let that guy go, how's that going to look on you without, you know, necessarily putting a clause in the contract and not having to put that thing in the contract where you're paying him till 2035, like... D'Angelo's family did dumb stuff like that, and it cost us a lot. From 2012 to 2016, our five-year championship window, we made the playoffs three times, won the division one time, and never got to a World Series when really, frankly, with at least that 2014 team, we probably should have should have got there, but we didn't. And then, you know, just it seemed like after that, the owner was just scared to throw out any more money, maybe really since that Jimenez contract, but that was, um, you know, was, was it all that surprising when you look back at it that that Jimenez contract didn't work? I don't know, but yeah, Orioles under new ownership, very excited about it, and like I said, hopefully this new owner can just, um, you know, get stuff done that Angelos couldn't, because, you know, we have the pieces, we're just coming off a 101 win season, and this team, even though they didn't really do much this year outside of, you know, signing Craig Kimbrell, that's a lot of the same players from last year that got you to where you were. And, you know, this is another th thing where I can say World Series could be an expectation, like it's a realistic expectation at this point, rather than, you know, reaching and being like, oh, maybe if we make the playoffs. No, at this point, the Orioles are set up to where their expectation for pretty much every year is this has to be a World Series year. And if this guy does the right things and builds this roster correctly and spends the money when needed to, we're definitely in good hands here. And I hope, I hope 
that he gives Mike Elias more freedom to do things that he wants to do as well, as long as they're on the same page. But it seems like the reason Mike Elias hasn't been able to do a ton with the team is because John Angelus has been kind of holding him back with a lot of other things. But at the same point in time, I trust Mike Elias, so that was no problem there. It was more the owner that I had a problem with, but now we won't have him around anymore, and hopefully he can stay far away, because we know he ain't getting invited back to Orioles stuff probably ever, but that's just how it is. His family is cheap, and really nobody likes them. I think that's just a given. It's like nobody really seems to give a crap. Like when they were showing last year him and Mike Elias in the press you know, box together, they just weren't making eye contact. Uh, John Angelos was like looking at his phone and you just could tell the awkwardness was there. Well, now it's got to be relieving for Mike Elias saying, I don't have that awkwardness hanging over me. And this guy seems like he's he's ready and willing to do whatever it takes to bring this team to the top rather than, you know, scout and draft good, which I still hope we do. But I would like to make a big splash or two in free agency because you know, with us being where we're at now, there's no reason we shouldn't be a big free agent destination. We got a young team, again, coming off a 100-plus win season and has a lot of these young players in their prime, so why wouldn't some of these other veterans want to come and play on this team that has potential to go all the way? Like, there's there's no reason that these players at this point in time are like, I don't want to play for the Orioles. Have you seen how they've been playing lately? That's not pretty much the case anymore. So, yeah, that's basically my thoughts. I'd like to hear what you think in the comments below, O's fans. But until then, stay safe out there, and uh, you'll be seeing a lot more videos from me as I just put out part one of my MLB 30 for 30 with me predicting the 2024 Baltimore Orioles roster. I will be doing the other 29 teams, obviously, every day until the 30th day because there's 30 teams. So 30 teams in 30 days, you'll get one every day um, until the 30 teams are up, so stay tuned for that. But till then, catch you in the next one.